So in this chapter, we're going to start introducing some of the technical terms that are needed for the advanced layer of the product or advanced users. Uh, this is a very good chapter, intro chapter. I encourage all kind of users, even if you're not going to be an advanced user, it does help to understand the terms. So when people are talking about a SACL or they're talking about data flow editor, you just kind of relate where and why and how in the product these are used. So first, let's start with the data considerations. Do not forget, when creating a data set, to avoid the complexity of where or how do I create the data set, which objects, is always about what this data set is about. What is the business question? So once you determine this data set is about opportunities and all the lookup fields from top, you create it against opportunities. Once it's about products, it's all about products. Once it's about the custom object you're dealing with, Bring the upper lookup fields. So always understand it's very important when you create the data set to include the lookup fields, the lookup objects. And obviously you want to include as much as you can the fields that are needed so you don't want to miss any of those fields. Now, with that being said, you can always simply go to the data flow editor and add the, the missed fields. But sometimes you might not have Maybe you don't have the access or there's different layers. So just take that into note once you create the first data set. So back to the level, this is where we're talking about the root level. That is very, very important. What is this data set mainly about? This is going to determine your root object where you start from. And even if you're an advanced user, and you feel there to go and you just use the data flow editor, SFDC digest nodes, etc. Always start with the data set builder. Even if you're a first beginner user, start with the data set builder. It will help you find out those relations. As we spoke in the previous chapter, if I start with account and I cannot find the next object, then I started at the wrong grain. I have to go back and start with the lower grain. So there's always been this analytics dilemma. And it always depends on the skill set of the user. It does not matter what product you're using, analytics product. There are ways to solve it at the data layer, and there are ways to solve it at the designer layer, at the dashboard query runtime. And Einstein Analytics provides the means in both layers. You can use data flows, you can use the powerful added data flow, or you can use the recipes and create the derived fields, create transformations, and prep the data as much as you can so that the data set is almost complete or easy for the dashboard designer to do their work. Or you can do it at the designer layer. We do have tools. We, we showed you connect data sources for different data sets. For example, if you did not combine them, we are going to talk about SACL, the powerful SACL editor. We are also going, going to talk about the JSON, the dashboard JSON, specifically the bindings. Those are powerful tools. Now, obviously, if you do it in one dashboard, you have to go and repeat it in the other dashboard. It is maybe faster to production if you want to consider that and uh, because in data set you might spend some time it's about data set expertise data expertise and in the end like i said it depends on the on the user if they are more on to, on the data expertise or maybe just the designer layer and the tool expertise with einstein analytics not being different than any other analytics tool it's pretty much number one is about the data on the left we start with a bunch of data we give it instructions, that's the tool. It gives it the instructions to query by what, to group by what, what's the measure, what's the filter, what's the order, and what's the chart, what's the presentation, what are the colors, and you end up with the right, that combo chart that looks like something that the users are familiar with. So behind the scene, it's all about instructions pretty much. So when you go to the technical jargon or, or pretty much the EA instructions, we kind of have four categories. The first two on top are the data layer ones, the data flows and recipes. Data flows are like transformations or like flows from one point to another, bringing the data from one point to another. You can add some transformations in between. And the fields or the XMD is that option in the lens, in the explore, explore, uh, Explorer, where you can go modify the labels, uh, add formats, add colors, hence the picture about cosmetics, for example, the paintings. So those are the, the data layer. Those are technical terms. And then in the lower part of the slide are the dashboard JSON. And look at that dashboard JSON. It's pretty much the components. Every piece right there is a widget and a step, and a widget and a step, and widget and a step, and together they facet 
uh, or interact each with each other. So that's the dash dashboard JSON, which sometimes we do need to edit go manually. And then you have the SACL. And in the SACL, that is pretty much when you are hands-on writing the query. You are editing the query manually. And there are certain use cases where you want to do that. How does this fit on a dashboard? So if you look at this screenshot or this diagram, the dashboard on the left, you see the map and you see the, the bar chart. This is what you see. But behind the scene, this is a, a widget and a step. And a widget is sort of a chart in this case, and the step is a query. So behind the scene in the dashboard JSON, you will see these listed as instructions, as lines in JSON language, which is pretty much descriptive slash instruction. And the second one in the bar, for example, you will see it's also a chart type, but maybe in this case, you have went manually and edited the query uh, in SACL editor. And that's why SACL, for example, lives on the dashboard in this case. It's a query living on that dashboard. Now, one dashboard can hit one or multiple data sets as we have seen. And each data set has that fields or XMD associated with it. So when the query from the map uh, uh, when you preview the map or the query the step executes, goes all the way down to the data set and then hits the, uh, and executes. Then add, on its way back, let's say, for example, it checks for the labels, for the formats, whatever, and goes back and represents it uh, at the uh, dashboard layer. Now, additionally, for each dashboard, there is a, this hidden file that you can access through API, not through the UI. It keeps the, right now, it keeps the conditional formatting. So when we did the conditional formatting uh, for the bins, for example, for the colors, for the conditions, if you look at the dashboard JSON itself, you will not see that listed. It is actually listed in that other file. If you ever hear about something called dashboard XMD or asset XMD, then that's what we mean about it. Again, there's a couple of articles. If you need to download it, then you know you can use that through the API, etc. Now, I know we've talked about these kind of dashboards, hitting the data sets, but we actually have one more kind of a step. That step is a SOCL step. That's where manually an advanced user will go behind the scene of the dashboard, behind the dashboard, and write a SOCL step that will real-time go query, for example, the local org or anything that's connected through our data. So again, these are hitting the data sets. The data sets are probably dependent on a recipe that's scheduled or a data flow that's scheduled, even a sync that's scheduled. But if you need that real-time, that, that little piece, that donut right here, and you want it real-time, I want to know the cases created today for this account regardless if the data flow ran yesterday, midnight or something, then you can use that. Now, just be aware, because it's a SOCL step, that means it's going to hit the performance if you use a lot of SOCL steps. So use it with caution. It's okay to use it. Just understand how it's uh, done. We're going to cover that in the advanced chapters.